Hey everyone, it's Anna and welcome back to my channel, my windowsill, and my room. So today this video is going to be about how to make an embroidery pattern using the Procreate app. I got into embroidery kind of near the beginning of this year, a couple months in, before the pandemic, thankfully, because I was able to get all the supplies that I needed before, and then once all the stores shutted, shutting down, I had everything already. So I didn't have to be worried about running out and getting things, but I have picked up some things since the shutdown has happened um, using curbside pickup with both Joanne and Michaels. Michaels was way more chill than Joanne. There was like a line of like a hundred people trying to get into Joanne fabric, which why they are open to people walking in, I have no idea. But anyways, so I'm going to show you how to use the Procreate app, which I have on my iPad right here. So I just have the standard iPad. I got it from Costco probably like two years ago and I think I just got this off of Amazon and it's just a standard iPad. I don't even know how big it is. It's not the Pro. It's not the Mini. How's that? How's that for ya? Okay so the iPad, the Procreate app, and we're gonna make an embroidery pattern today. I did a um screen record and I'm going to do a voiceover so bear with me because I have to predict what I did because I don't exactly remember but this is going to be the final project a cute little embroidery hoop that says home sweet home um I have an embroidery hoop hanging in the window here this is how I dry them after I wash them and it's going to kind of look like this one love grows here with the circle but this one is going to go to the edges a little bit more than this one did um this was my first time ever making my own pattern and it turned out oopsies it turned out so beautiful you won't see this video until i gift this one to my friend even though nobody knows that i make youtube videos except my mom and my grandparents and my husband so it doesn't even matter but i'm still gonna do it because i'm gonna tell myself that this is going somewhere even if it's not so Without further ado, let's screen record and what's it called? Screen record and uh, voice over this pattern. Okay, everybody, let's get going. So first we're gonna open up our Procreate app. So here is your gallery where it saves all the templates that you've been making plus some pre-made ones from Procreate that you can practice with. Um, as you can see, we're going to make a new template. So we click the 4x6 photo and from there we open it up and we're going to press the wrench. And you're going to click canvas and crop and resize. And you're going to change it to a 6x6 and press done and now you have a wonderful 6x6 template that you can now use to create a 6 inch pattern. So we're going to draw a circle and we're going to edit the shape and make it into a circle because it kind of makes an oval because none of us are perfect. So let me show you. You're going to press the pen, mono line is what I use. I click my streamline up to like 60%. That's kind of the weight of your pen. It allows you to draw a smoother line, which is quite nice when making a circle. So I always have, I always do my templates in black so that I can add color with my embroidery thread. And on the left is the size of your pen tip. I always do mine at the smallest size, but you might want to make it a little bit bigger for yourself. So circle, hold down, edit shape, and here we go, drawing a circle. And then you're gonna, it's in its own new layer. So you make sure that you're on the correct layer and then it's in blue showing that it's correct. And then you click the mouse tip thing, LOL. And you're gonna resize it to fit your actual six by six screen this is going to make it perfect for a six inch hoop and it gives you a guide so now we're going to make a new layer by pressing that plus button and change our pen color to gray because we're going to be making a gray circle so make sure you're back on pen mono line fine tip draw your gray circle this is going to end up being your outline for kind of 
what shape your flowers and your greenery is going to follow. You kind of want to center that, but make it obviously smaller than your hoop. This gives you a really nice guide when you're starting to draw. So I always pull my entire canvas to the right hand corner because I am right handed and start on a new layer. This is super important because this layer, when you erase it, it's only going to erase from this layer and you're going to mess up and you're going to have to erase. Change your pen back to black on your new layer and start going. So I'm drawing a circle, add its shape, making sure it's a perfect circle. This is going to be my first woven wheel of this pattern. And I'm going to go ahead and do a, what, what's that called? That is a nice fishbone leaf. That's my favorite combo, a woven wheel for, plus a fishbone leaf. And I'm drawing a little tiny circle in the middle to remind myself that I want to put French knots in the middle of this woven wheel. So, as you can see, I'm following right around that gray circle because that's going to be the pattern that my circle follows. So I see I made a little air there. You press the eraser up at the top. I make it a little bit bigger on the left hand side. Erase and then I press my pen again and change it back to fine tip. And I start going with a stem. My favorite stitch is going to be ironically the stem stitch. And I'm going to do some wonderful little fish bone leaves off of that one as well. So, as you saw there, I drew a line, and it wasn't perfect, so I held down, and then Procreate makes it a perfect line, and for that, I'm forever grateful, because I can't draw straight, even if I tried, and you can see I use it for all sorts of things, that little line element, and I like to kind of pinch so the way you move your screen and procreate is using two fingers on the ipad and i kind of pinch and i like to look and see kind of how the whole grand scheme of things going i want to make sure that my color is distributed well my greenery is distributed well i use about four to five different greens when i'm making these templates so as you can see i'm making little half hearts that's what i like to call them and when i hold down procreate actually rounds them into the perfect shape and i can kind of move them this only works when you're trying to make a rounded leaf. It does not work, unfortunately, when you are making a pointed leaf like the fishbone leaves that I made earlier. So that's a great technique to make sure that your leaves are perfect. And so here I'm just drawing that line, holding down, and it's making the perfect line for me. And for that, I am so grateful. Okay, so now that about 50% of my template is done, well, more like 25%, I like to pull over to the other side of my embroidery pattern. Um, I'm going to make some nice woven wheels with some more fishbone, kind of to balance out um, having it on the other side as well. I like to do 25% and then switch to the exact opposite side of the template. This is because it allows me to distribute and just make sure that everything looks nice and is distributed well. If I were to do one half and then the other half or work my way in a complete circle, I feel like I would inevitably end up with a less balanced pattern overall. And by doing this, it lets me 
make sure it's more balanced. So those are my three woven wheels that I made and I'm going to actually make some dots to remind myself to do French knots. I thought of this once I got to this side. Honestly, once I'm actually embroidering it, I will probably add some French knots to the other side as well because I like I love French knots. It adds a really nice pop of color to the entire picture. So I'm going to add it all around. I'll probably add some in the middle of the three and then probably all the way around the picture in whatever color scheme I decide to do this embroidery pattern with. And I will make sure that all three woven wheels are a different color as well. So I'm just kind of resizing, looking at it, making sure that it feels balanced and nice. And I'm just going to keep going on this side by adding more greenery and balancing it out. So now that I finished that 25%, I'm moving on to the next 25% of the pattern. And I'm just going to keep adding and keep going with the greenery and flowers. I like to change the lengths of my stems and the lengths of my leaves. I feel like that adds really nice contrast in your pattern. Especially if a lot of your greens are really similar or you're kind of feeling like you have a lot of one leaf style just changing it up like that and also adding single leaves around your pattern can really fill gaps that you're not sure exactly what to put there or you don't want to add you don't want to add a flower for say just adding single fishbone leaves as much of a pain in the booty they are to embroider fishbone leaves will look amazing so now i switched over to the last 25 percent I make sure that I'm on the right layer because I'm going to erase and I want to make sure that I'm erasing the correct layer and save myself pain in the end. So we're just going to keep going, keep adding and making this pattern complete. Okay, now we have our wonderful floral wreath all done, and I'm thinking I want to add some writing, and I suck at writing, so I'm actually going to pull something from the internet and show you how to pull an image into your Procreate. So I actually go to my Pinterest, and I have been saving stuff for a long time that I like and want to add to embroidery, or as inspiration for my embroidery. So I just scroll through and this is a great place to find fine line art, color schemes, patterns. And so I make sure that I just have a board where I save all of these on for future projects. So I take this home sweet home that I found. I obviously don't want the wreath, I just want the writing and I screenshot it. So now that that's saved in my photos, we're headed back to Procreate where we press the wrench, add, insert a photo, and it brings you to your camera roll. 
and you're just going to press on that photo and it brings it in on its own new layer so you can see that layer inserted image and now you're going to press the eraser make it bigger and start erasing the wreath that was already on this pattern and you can see it's its own layer so it's not harming any of the layers that you put down before which is great and you might need to change up the size of your eraser eventually so that you're making sure you're not erasing the home sweet home you can always undo whatever you've done in procreate by either tapping your screen with two fingers at the same time just once or on the left all the way to the bottom there's a little sideways u with an arrow and that's backspace and you can see i had to undo my stroke and I just keep going with it, changing my eraser size as I go. And so I'm going to show you how to change the background color. So I'm just going to change it to a random color. I picked yellow and you just literally grab the little circle dot and pull it to the middle and drop it on. This changes the background color. So now I can see where that pattern stops and mine starts. So I know that I'm erasing the correct thing and it helps me reposition the writing into the center of the template without obstructing my own template. You could do the same thing if you pull something onto Procreate that has a different color background than your background. You can change the entire background by doing this. You see how in the little letters it's still white. You would just pull the yellow into those tiny spots. Now I'm doing the same thing attempting there we go to pull the white and now i change the background color and you have your template and it says home sweet home in the middle and it's very cute this is a way to have writing without having to write so now we are going to merge our layers this makes it one beautiful template so i got rid of the gray layer by simply unchecking the box next to it in layers because I don't want to print the gray layer and now this shows you kind of if you have any gaps or not you press on your layer eventually I will I'm assuming like I said I can't predict what I'm doing <laughs> so I'm going to actually move the gray layer all the way to the bottom because I want inserted image layer 3 and layer 1 to all merge so you press inserted image and you press merge down and that is now the lettering and what you drew are merged. And now we're going to take layer three, which is both of those, and press merge down. And now your hoop outline, what you drew, and your wonderful lettering are all on the same template. So that's kind of how you make your template. Now I'm going to show you how to print your template. So you simply press share. On the after you press the wrench I always pick PDF best quality always and now I just click print and it sends it to my printer just like that it's gonna say export failed because I'm not actually gonna print it but that's how you would do it if you wanted to and you could also press share PDF best and email it to yourself or anybody else if you would like by simply pressing mail and if you have mail attached it's just gonna go straight to your email and of course it's gonna say unsuccessful but that is your wonderful template that you just made thanks for following along I appreciate it